Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp for iPad Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp for iPad. Today, we're going to talk about creating groups and components. So if you're already an experienced SketchUp user, you know the power of groups and components. If it's, you're just getting into SketchUp on iPad, uh, the concept might be new to you, but we'll talk about the importance of using those specific items when you're modeling in SketchUp. Regardless whether you've used SketchUp before or not, one of the things of course we'll cover in here, this is square one, we're going to cover the basics, we're going to talk about how to create groups and components and work with them. Let's hop in. Okay, so I'm here in SketchUp, and uh, first I want to talk about just, just super quick, we're talking about two things, groups and components, they are two different items, but they function very similarly in that they are containers. They hold together the SketchUp items we create. So SketchUp items being of course edges and faces, uh, we've seen a bunch of ways to create those so far, but a group and component puts them all together inside of one piece. And we're going to show, let me, I'm going to, before we do anything else, I want to show why that's important. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a quick square. I'm just draw a rectangle on the ground and I'm going to pull it up like that. I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab this face right here. Now, if I go to move and I start moving that around, you can see, look what happens right here. So that face, that face that I have selected, that, that rectangle is moving and all the geometry is connected to it is stretching. This is what SketchUp does. This is how it works. Um, this is not good or bad. This is just, this is like, you know, water's wet, sky's blue. This is how it works. If I grab a piece of connected geometry and move it, everything is connected to it moves. That's like a base level thing I want to point out here. All right, so I'm going to create another smaller uh, cube here or box. Sorry, it's a cube. It's all exactly the same size, right? So this is really just a box. I'm going to go ahead and select it and I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it from the corner right here. I'm going to drop that right up against there. Now, if I take this now and I try to move it, it's going to do some weird stuff because it's stuck to that face. If I say I want to move it out on the red axis, watch what happens here. It stretches that. As soon as I dropped this small box next to the big box, the geometry merged. So it became one piece of geometry and stuck together, just like that original face that I started moving. I'm going to go ahead and tap undo a couple times. And I'm going to take this selected geometry, it's highlighted right now, and I'm going to come down to the toolbar at the bottom. So in the toolbar, we have a couple options right here. So there's cut copy, and then we have this little... Uh, two boxes in a dotted outline, which is group, and then three stacked boxes, which is component. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the first one. I'm gonna hit group, and that put that geometry in a group. So now, if I do that same thing I did before, I go move, and I grab by that edge, I drop that edge on the edge here, and then I try to move it off again, look at that. It stayed separate because this geometry is isolated. It's inside of the group. If I want to edit that, I have a couple things I can do. I have a new button on the toolbar while this is highlighted, which is three cubes far away from each other. That's the explode button. Clicking the explode button will get rid of the group and take me back to just the base geometry. I'm going to put it back in the group real quick because if I want to edit it without exploding it, the, thing, the important thing to remember about exploding is if I explode this, that geometry, boom, now re-exists in the, the top level context. So if this cube right here. If, if I had this square and I'm going to go ahead and put it back right up against this. So right now it's not joined. If I explode it, that geometry comes out in the same context as the larger cube. They get joined together. So if I want to edit it without having to explode it, all I have to do is go into select. And if I double click on that group, I'm inside the group now. Everything else in the model grayed out. And now I can do whatever I want. I can edit. I can manipulate whatever I want inside that group. And then clicking outside the group will just return me back to context. Now, a cool thing, so what, something I can do that's, that's, that's fairly uh, easy or a good way to use these items is to duplicate them. So if I go to move and I say I want to uh, make a copy, I can grab one, put it over here. I do it multiple times. I could use stamp for that too. I'm going to make a couple different copies. So with a group like this, if I was to come into context, I'm going to go into this group and I use push pull on the top, make it taller. And now if I come back out, all right, as you'd expect, this group was edited, this group changed. Now here's a couple things, something to think about. I'm going to undo a couple times. I'm going to get back to just one. 
Now I'm going to take this group and I'm going to hit make component button. So a couple things happen when I make a component. First thing is I have the option of giving it a name. So I can go in and say, what do I want to call this? If I hit the little down arrow, I also have the ability to come in and put a description in. So if there's something special about this box that I'm creating, I could type what that is. And then I have some options for alignment. So when I create a component, I have the option of saying I want it to stick to certain pieces. I want it to uh, orient the same way or a specific way. This, this I'll actually do a separate video on, on component options. We'll go deeper into this. But know that when you create a component, there's more to it than just a group. A group, straight up container. Plop your stuff in here and leave it. That's all there is to a group. Component has two things. It has data, which is what we're looking at here. We'll talk about this some more in the next one. And it links together with other copies of the component. And that's what we want to look at now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. And now I'm going to take this one. I'm going to move it. And we'll go same exact thing I did before. I'll grab this one, copy it over here. And then I made a second copy over here. Now, just like I did before, let's double click to enter this component. I'm going to grab Push, Pull, and pull the top up just like I did on the other one. Look what happens. All the other copies are going to go, go along with it. So when you create or make a change to a single component, all copies of that component are changed the same way. So again, at this point, I do have the option to explode it, which would take that geometry out of the component and just return, return it to normal context. I also have, just, just worth noticing, well, if I hit the little ellipse button on the toolbar down here at the bottom, I have some options that are specific to this component. Uh, I do have edit and explode. Those are the same thing. Double clicking takes me to edit. Hitting the three boxes button explodes. But I also have this option that says make unique. When I click make unique, it says, okay, this is still a component, but now it's different from the original copies. So if I take it right now and I copy it one more time, go ahead and grab it, stick it over here. Now, if I go in and edit that one, and we'll do another push pull and just bring the top back down this time, Look what happens. The original copies that are a different component now than the new one that I made stay tall while this one and the new copy come down like that. So uh, components are amazing tools to work with when you're modeling. Anytime you have geometry that's going to repeat and stay consistent, you want to use a component. In fact, there are people out there who say that if you're creating anything that represents a thing in the real world, it should be inside of a component. It should be given a name and it should be held onto as a separate piece. Groups have their place too. Groups are great for bringing pieces together. So we'll do one last thing here. Let's say I wanna make sure that these, uh, maybe all these items, we don't need, we need that, we just need these guys. I might throw all these guys into a group because what that does Again, not only does it isolate the geometry from anything else, but it keeps everything in the group relative to itself. So as I go in here to move this, I don't have to worry about, oh, at, when I moved it, did the space between these two blocks change? No, it can't because it's inside the group. So I can move this all around as if it was one piece whenever I want. So groups are not are, are great for you know isolating geometry like we talked about, but they're also great for keeping pieces together. So it's up to you, of course, to come up with a system that you like best between groups and components, but you can see the way they work and the function. Hopefully, you see the function that they have as you create a model. Uh, that's most of what I could think about for groups and components. I, the, the topic of groups and components can go on quite a bit longer, but I wanted to have this first one be simple. I wanted to have, uh, you know, just here's how to make them and what they are. That's what I was shooting for here. Uh, keep an eye out. I'll do another one. I want to go specifically into the properties of a component. I want to go in, like dive deep into how they get used and what, what you use them for. That's super important. It's really, really something you can, you can go into because you can, how you use those tools is extremely important in SketchUp and you have a lot of options. People sometimes don't realize. So we'll come back. We'll do some more, more component videos. But if that worked for you, if you liked that video, go ahead and click like down below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos around here each and every week. And you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, more than anything else, please leave us a comment down below. We love hearing what you guys think of these videos. Uh, even if it's something like, oh, that was great. I didn't know that. Or could you make a video on this next? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.